Jesus explains CERN's Hadron Collider, hate, riots, war, and my powerful weapon. July 9th, 2015. Words from Jesus through Sister Claire. Spoken by Jackie. Jesus began. I want to talk with you about the Hadron Collider because this technology is being used widely in different places each time they want to start a war. The reason the riots never happened in South Carolina is because the people turned to God. They saw through the plot to incite anarchy and refused to cooperate. When they turned to me, I put a stop to the energies being used to provoke them. Claire, this machinery has been used time and time again all over the world to instill the worst bitter hatred and urge to kill. It is standard operating procedure. But you see, when a people is steeped in me, when they turn to me, it no longer works. And may I say, they may increase their attack tenfold, and I will foil it elevenfold. I will not permit the people to be tested beyond their capacity to withstand the temptation. I will provide a way out. That is my promise and I will keep it. The wisdom and solidarity the people showed put an end to what could have been a statewide bloodbath and riots provoking martial law. This is the challenge now. These kinds of civil incitements will increase and unless the people turn to me, they will fall prey to the schemes of evil men and women. What I'm teaching our YouTube family is all they really need to know, namely that I love them and how to love me back and stay in that relationship of love between us. What the powers behind the Collider are trying to do is basically reduce people to an animal mentality turned against itself until they all kill one another. But I will never ever allow them to be overwhelmed if they turn to me. That is why the enemy is trying to find a way to cut off the mind from that portion of the brain that communicates with me most clearly. What they do not understand is that I'm omnipotent. They cannot stop my communication with the soul. I will override their every attempt to cut the soul off from me, as written in Romans 8, 35-39. That word is written, and that word stands, and nothing shall be able to defy it. Who is it that thinks they can destroy what I have created? The prince of demons. But his very existence depends on my sustaining energy. His days are numbered, and he knows it. What he could not do in his demon kingdom, he has enlisted foolish men to accomplish for him. But God shall not be mocked. They may disassemble, but I will reassemble. I will intervene again and again and again. They are wasting their time and Satan is amusing himself with their efforts, hoping that somehow, if he keeps feeding them technology, they will hit upon it. But he knows his time is short, and I have all the time in the world to play this game while I'm putting the finishing touches on my brides. Oh, my beautiful ones, don't you see? I'm leading you. The one thing that holds this universe in place is my love. Should I cease to love, nothing and no one would exist anymore. The entire creation would implode and cease to be. And that particle of love I have sown in your hearts is the key to remaining stable when these weapons are used against you and you feel the almost uncontrollable urge to hate, fight and fall into this trap, recall my love to your mind, recall my face, look into my love, for I am there in that crucial moment to strengthen you and foil the attack 
of the enemy to bring your demise. One thing I must address in my family. I live in you. You do not have to search for me in heaven or on earth. I am living inside of you all the time. Do not confuse seeing me with my being present to you. I am always, always, always present to you, right there inside of you. I am. That I have to come down from heaven to manifest is a false teaching. I can manifest any way and any time I want to, right before your eyes. Many times in a service I will choose to manifest in front of the congregation, but every person present has me residing within them. That's why you are so powerful to overcome the enemy. I've not left you orphans, not for one second. I dwell within you continually. So when you see me, it's not because I came from heaven to visit you. It's because I manifested my all-the-time presence to your spiritual eyes in that moment of time. So stop considering me a faraway God. Speak with me in your heart where I dwell. I want to return to the Collider. All over the world these instruments of destruction and their small-scale mini-weapons are being manufactured. And as you observe, more and more countries fall under the raging influence of these machines. Remember, love conquers all. With love, that one particle I put in you, we will arrest the entire wave of violence if we stand together. What is coming to this world is an unprecedented wave of crime and violence stirred up by these evil creatures, and not the least of which is the scientific community, which is devoid of a conscience. In very fact, many are inhabited by demonic entities, fallen angels, and are orchestrating the demise of humanity under the innocent guise of scientific exploration and discovery, to benefit humankind, so they say. Lies, 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 so many lies. The one thing Satan does well is to lie. And these men have been duped almost to the point of no return. But what I want to make clear here is what I've told you all along. Love conquers all, even the elites in science and technology. Love easily conquers them as well. So I'm calling for my people to get it solid in their heads. I live and breathe and move in you. And you live and move and breathe in me. Your prayers are heard as you utter them. There is no delay. I'm immediately aware and furthermore, I know ahead of time what you will pray. I'm so ready for your prayers. I am so present to you, and nothing can conquer the soul who has chosen to live for me. So, I do not wish for you to be afraid of these things. No, take authority with my name over these things, and especially your own flesh. Take authority over your tendencies to retaliate, to grow angry, bitter, resentful. These are the things that will conquer you, not some alien technology. I've given this into your hands. It is the very power of love. So now you must use it. How, you ask? By choosing to love over hate, by choosing to forgive over retaliate, by choosing to give over selfishness. At every turn you are tested. Every day in your responses you are given a chance to grow in love. And because love conquers all, this is no coincidence. I am training you in the love response. Some of you will be taken, others will stay. Love is the only way the left behind ones will conquer evil. They may take your body, but they will never get your soul. 
those who will be destroyed on the battlefield for the most part will not be human beings with a soul. Rather, they will be scientific soldiers, not of God's origin, rather manufactured, just like dolls, except with technology that is far superior and ties into the human makeup. These bodies will be inhabited by demons. You see, there is so much you do not understand about the early days of the Old Testament, when the order was given to destroy men, women and children. The demonic infestation in even what looked like an innocent child was horrendous. Even the animals were polluted and impure. Entire societies had been corrupted to the point of no return. And when an Israelite married out of this stock, it corrupted everything about them, but especially the God connection, which had deliberately been suppressed in breeding. When you trace back the truly evil ones in history, you will find somewhere in their lineage those who mated with demons. My children, I've instructed you this day. Choose love over hate and never will you be conquered. Now is the time to exercise that virtue like never before. Each day I say to you again, Choose love over hatred. Do not compromise with the enemy. Conquer him by love. Of course, I'm imparting to you now the wisdom and restraint to be free enough to choose what is right. It is the choice of your will. I will back it up with my grace, always and everywhere. Now you know, happy will you be if you put into practice what you have learned.